You know, there's a lot of things, Manglam, you and I talk about on the show, things that are on top of mind at any given point of yep. day. But honestly, if there is one thing that you think about every day, especially when you're at work, what do you think it is? One thing that I think about every time is sleeping. If I have no work, if I have nothing to do, I will just go ahead and sleep irrespective of what the time it is. So that's an honest answer. Sleep is actually always on top of mind and that is what we discuss here today on Mad About Markets. And it's just not us, it's Indians as a race. We're the second most sleep deprived people in the world after the Japanese. We get an average of seven hours, one minute sleep every night, but that is still 48 minutes lesser than the average British citizen or 32 minutes lesser than the American citizen and that's not all if you talk about deep sleep quality of sleep indians get just 77 minutes of rem or rapid eye movement sleep on an average that is the lowest in the world so i mean it's understandable that sleep deprivation is always on top of mind well you're not at fault and you would think that it's people like you or maybe the younger generation still that gets lesser amount of sleep but actually it is the elderly because this Fitbit report that Manglam spoke about it finds that Indian users in the age group of 75 to 90 years of age got the lowest amount of sleep at 6 hours and 35 minutes on average even though users in the age group of 18 to 25 went to bed an hour later than users in this older age group. And the pandemic, that has made things much worse because one of the most common health issues, which is reported globally by those affected by COVID, is lack of sleep. And a recent survey also found 52% Indians admitting that their sleep pattern changed following the pandemic. And one in two Indians that were surveyed also said that they got less than six hours of uninterrupted sleep each night, far lower than the recommended seven hours or more. And what does lack of sleep do to you? Makes you irritable, cranky <laughs> and unable to make good decisions well it can literally affect your physical and mental health so after nutrition and fitness sleep is often called the third pillar of our well-being and if you're still not convinced about it by us saying it hear it from the big people amazon boss uh, jeff bezos said it and kavaljeet singh as well he puts his money where all these sleep companies are he's the managing partner and founder of fireside ventures hear them out I get eight hours of sleep, I prioritize it, unless I'm traveling in different time zones, sometimes it's impossible, but I am very um, focused on it, and, and, and the, for me, I need eight hours of sleep. I think better, I have more energy, my mood is better, all these things. And think about it, as a senior executive, what do you really get um, paid to do? As a senior executive, you get paid to make a small number of high quality decisions. You make 133 decisions. Is that really worth it if the quality of those decisions might be lower because you're tired or grouchy or any number of things? So we have invested in a company called The Sleep Company. And uh, I, I can tell you that is really a very exciting. And sleep tech, not just sleep. And how you can use technology to improve the quality of the sleep and the comfort that you have. And I think that's another breakthrough space uh, which we are very excited about. Well, there you have it. Bezos telling you why sleep is important and people like Kavaljeet, why they're putting money into it because of the potential opportunity that they see in the industry. Because many are waking up to the importance of nightly rest, which is powering an emerging industry which promises quality sleep. And you'd be surprised, the global sleep economy, that was pegged at a whopping $432 billion as of 2019. And that is expected to grow all the way to $585 billion come 2024. I'm wondering if sleep was a country, it perhaps would have been one of the largest countries in the world world at 585 billion dollars of GDP but then again sleep is priceless ain't it <laughs> well uh, looks like you can put a number to that but let's break up the components of this mega 430 plus billion dollar industry now in this the bedroom furniture that makes up about 106 billion dollars bedding another 98 billion mattress about 81 billion dollars but very important pajamas you'd be surprised is 32 billion dollars you also have the continuous positive airway pressure or cpap devices accounting for 25 billion sleep slup, uh, supplements another 18 billion and the rest includes your sleep tech tracking devices air uh, plane sleep accessories pillows and whatnot that uh, completes this entire 432 billion dollar industry of this $432 billion, Ritu, where do you spend your most amount of money? Definitely mattresses. Definitely mattresses, right? Do you use any of those apps, etc.? No, none of them actually. But pajamas, yes. You know, mattresses, Ritu said it, and we all know one of the most important factors for good sleep is a good quality mattress. And that market alone was worth almost $2 billion as of FI19, estimated to be more than three, almost 
almost $3 billion, $2.8 billion by FY24. And understandably, up until now, it was the unorganized sector which primarily dominated the Indian mattress market. But increasingly, and increasing awareness, uh, the ability of people to go ahead and spend and the brands communicating the benefits of organized mattresses, branded products that they give, that has led the organized industry grow by almost 17% at a compounded rate over the last five years. The organized branded mattress industry accounted for nearly 29% of the market in FY14. That's telling you that the unorganized market was dominant at 71%. That has now come down to 60%. And as of FY24, that is likely to be 40% of the market from 29% to 40%. So that's how important the mattress industry is and the organized mattress industry at that. Well, clearly the organized industry is growing, so let's hear it from the players who make up this organized industry. We have four very special guests representing the entire universe. Mohan Raj Jagan Nivasan, the CEO of Duroflex, is with us. So is Chaitanya, the co-founder of WakeFit. We also have Priyanka Salo, the co-founder of the sleep company in which Fireside Ventures is an investor. And also with us is K. Madhavan, the managing director of Pep Industries. Lady and gentlemen, thank you very much for being on the show. Chaitanya, first with you, you know, what do you estimate is the slice uh, size of the sleep industry and within that the mattress market uh, you know as per your uh, reading of the primary market firstly in india the sleep market itself as an overall thing which includes sleep apps meditation apps uh, other sleep devices that is a market that's not been quantified as well however on the mar mattress side there are three levels of markets number one is the overall mattress market which is about two to two and a half billion dollars uh, within that is the organized market, which is about a billion dollars. Within the organized space, there is the online mattress market, uh, which is about uh, close to about 1500 crore uh, in INR. Uh, so when you look at these three segments, we uh, estimate that we are about one third of the complete online market and about 10 to 11% of the overall organized market. Uh, but please note, all of these three levels are growing at a very different pace. The overall industry is going only at about 6 to 8%. The organized part is growing as much as 12 to 15%. And the online part is growing as much as 25-30% a year because the base is so small. All right, so more people are buying branded uh, mattresses, but more of them are also buying it online now, 25 to 30%. But Mohan Raj, in a market that is predominantly unorganized, how do you hope to expand share? Is there a clear shift that's taking place towards a more organized play? I mean, do you see that in your uh, daily life? So where this industry was like six, seven years back and now there's a big change. Demonetization helped a lot, you know, in, in taking out a lot of unorganized players. GST has played a big role, uh, and we're seeing this industry getting organized. Uh, the, the entire digital penetration, particularly in the last two years, uh, you know, all of us was doing work from home, we would have seen the, the D2C ecosystem has evolved in most of the category. It's, it's no, uh, you know, different for the mattress industry and sleep industry as well. And with the e-commerce play and the digital play, the penetration has gone up. Uh, but if you, uh, if you really see this uh, product, uh, you know, historically, is a very boring product. You know, it is somewhere in the corner of your bedroom, covered under a bed linen. Uh, this is not a product where anybody would like to flaunt like a living room, uh, you know, furniture like a sofa or a wall unit. Uh, this is a very private space. And hence, uh, you know, the uh, the significance of this product was not known much. But I would say this with the entire uh, COVID playing a large part and sleep playing a very important role in recovery from COVID. This industry is getting the desired focus now. Well, yes, the importance of good sleep is dawning on Indians and a lot of startups are taking advantage of that. Priyanka, you started as a D2C brand and then, of course, you went on to launch your offline stores in Bangalore, Hyderabad and other cities and you plan to open 25 more. Why did you decide to go offline? Uh, you know, we had uh, Wakefit and others telling us that almost 25% of the sales are actually now coming in online. Absolutely. As you said, you know, just three years back, we started as a D2C brand uh, with the vision to, you know, become world's best comfort tech brand, uh, revolutionizing or upgrading the way people sleep and sit. I think the very, very smooth journey has been, you know, to went from D2C to offline. But as we do that, to me, it's exactly like D2C. It's the same omni channel that would play out and the simple reason for us to venture from online to omni channel i think is twofold one is if you see 
uh, you know, three years down the line, you would still expect more than 70% of the consumers shopping sleeping products like mattresses, beds, offline, right? And the second big reason is um, the touch and feel also plays a very big role in this industry. And I think that's why it was a very obvious choice for the sleep company uh, to go and open its own stores within three years of launch. Let's talk about the organized mattress industry. Now, in India, it mainly consists of three types of mattresses. One, you have the coil mattresses, the PU foam mattresses, and the spring mattresses. About these mattresses itself, the coil mattress dominated the market initially, and now it's been overtaken by the less expensive PU foam mattress, which accounts for nearly half the market, 50%. But spring mattresses are the ones which are driving growth. Currently, they account for about a third of, a market, uh, a third of the market, and they're growing extremely fast. Let's talk about the prices as well. The bulk of the action is in the mid segment with the price range anywhere between 8 to 30,000 rupees. This segment has a 50% share of the market. The economy segment, which consists of mattresses under 8,000 rupees, is about 25% of the market. So basically, 75% of the market is sub 30,000. Then we talk about the luxury and the premium segments. The premium segment between 30,000 to 75,000 rupees a mattress and the luxury segment, which is 5% of the market at 75,000 rupees plus per mattress. And that's where the margins are. And at 75,000 rupees, it better give you good sleep because in terms of customers, it's the residential buyers like you and me who account for 80% of the sales. But 20% of the sales do come from the institutional sector as well. Who are the guys who buy mattresses in the bulk? Maybe it would be the hotels, the hospitals, all of them accounting for the remaining 20%. So that's about all things mattresses. All things mattresses, residential sales accounting for the bulk of it, but who's selling these to you? Well, there are established players like Curlon, your Duroflex, Sheila Foam, uh, Pep, Springfit. All of these uh, have been strong brand names. They have a you know, pan-India presence as well and become national brands, but entry barriers are quite low and a number of startups and therefore have smelt this opportunity and are entering the market. So they're trying to distinguish themselves using technology and innovative niche products that they're coming up with. Now, from Wakefit to Flow, Sleepy Cat, your sleeps here, sleep company, and so on. A lot of companies with the name Sleep have uh, mushroomed in the sleep market over the last few years, especially after the pandemic. Yes, I mean, and it, it's so unintuitive to name just Sleep or add that word Sleep in that company. Must be hard to add another company with the name Sleep. I'm I think everything's if, taken up. If you had to open a company, what would you call it? Well, definitely not something to do with sleep. Oh, well, we'll see that. But, you know, Ms. Madhavan, you, you've been in this market for over a decade. What is your market share currently? How do you expand it in a market which is predominantly unorganized, but also increasingly seeing a lot of these startups enter? Yeah, the uh, mattress industry is uh, highly unorganized, as you rightly said. Uh, consolidation has not taken place. Uh, you see quite a large... Uh, uh, players from the regional uh, um, areas are uh, getting involved uh, in the activity. And um, as uh, Pepsi is concerned, uh, we are a South Indian based uh, uh, organization or industry uh, company, and we hold uh, closer to around 44% uh, of uh, the spring mattress uh, uh, share uh, in, this, in, in, in Pan India. And, uh, and uh, this industry, as I told you, um, out of this industry, um, spring mattresses is around 1,200 crores. Well, we heard from the traditional players. Chaitanya, you as a newer age company, uh, what is your strategy? Will online continue to be your focus area? That's where the sales are coming? Or, uh, you know, what kind of offline, online mix would be ideal for a company like yours? I wouldn't sit here and predict an ideal mix. This will have to be guided by our customers but we definitely are going offline. We've already opened up 10 stores in about seven cities, which have given us a really, really promising uh, data. And over the next six months, we are opening up about another 15 uh, extra stores. So that will make it about 25, 30 stores by the end of this financial year. So what we learned from our customers was that despite earning their trust and uh, buying uh, and building this online category uh, of mattresses over these seven years, there are some categories where they still want to come and compare with the whole family. They still want to come in with a catalog or a shortlist in mind. They still want to bring photos from their home, sit and compare with the salesperson at a store. So given what we learned, we opened up stores and that's been a, a pleasant surprise.
Well, from a listed standpoint, we have just one player, that's Sheila Foam. So, are we going to get any more? Let's ask uh, Mohan Raj. Mohan, uh, what are your IPO plans? Rather, Duroflex's IPO plans? Yes, we have plans to go public in the next two to three years. Uh, hopefully, we are on course. Uh, as I said, we grew from 450 to close to 1,000 close last year. Uh, so, we've set our goals for the next two years. Uh, I think around two years from now, we'll probably have a have a relook at the right time to go public. Uh, I can't give you a specific time, but yes, uh, the plan is to go public in the next two to three years. We take a short break. On the other side, we take a closer look at the Indian sleep industry, the pros and the cons, the yes or the nays. And we also ask the bigger question, and that is, what will it really take to shake up and wake up the sleep industry? That and more after this short break. Welcome back. You're watching us here on Mad About Markets. We're tracking the Indian sleep industry. Now, as always, let's talk about the yays and mays of the Indian sleep industry. We start with yays. And the biggest yay, of course, is uh, the number of sleepers that we have. I mean, we have <laughs> 130 crore Indians. So, I mean, that's a big yay, ain't it? And that's 80% of the market, right? <laughs> there, I take that point. But you know, the logistic cost because of a huge mattress transportation, that is a big cost for the industry to reckon with. And that's often holding back some of the players from expanding a lot. But not only are there a lot of people, there are a lot of people who are actually moving separate houses. I mean, we see a lot of uh, family nuclearization, etc. So if that were to happen, then more houses, more beds required, more guest rooms required and more sleep industry material. Sure, and that, that's why a lot of new players are waking up to the opportunity. They're using tech, they're using innovative products to enter this market, which is displacing some of the established players. Enough about the macros. Let's talk about individuals. Everyone's increasingly aware of how important sleep is for them. True. So they are willing to invest in what gives them the best sleep. But how do you arrive at the cost, right? And that is important for these manufacturers because the raw material prices, they're fluctuating wildly, especially, you know, sorry to go back to the macros, given the current environment. Well, in that case, you differentiate your product offering instead of, you know, just talking about, okay, this is the commodity that I'm giving, these are the input prices. This is my differentiated offering. My product offers the best sleep irrespective of the price. No matter what your product is, at the end of the day, you know, sustainability, recycling, all of that is very important to consider. And with huge mattresses, that remains a big challenge for the industry. That remains a big challenge. I take your point. But, you know, increasingly, people are adopting to D2C, e-commerce, all the other channels, which does not require people to perhaps transport those mattresses so much from a warehouse to perhaps a store, etc. Now it's warehouse to your house directly. Well, I think we're even Stephen there. So let's pose this question to the guests. Let's do that. Well, now that we've spoken about what works and doesn't work for the industry, Madhavan, to your mind, what are the biggest challenges? Uh, is it recycling? Is it the huge transportation cost? The raw material price fluctuation? What is it? As you rightly said, uh, uh, recycling, uh, uh, is a big challenge. Uh, what I mean is um, uh, a customer who procures uh, a mattresses, whether it's ours or whether it's uh, uh, some other brand, uh, they utilize these mattresses for quite longer period. I uh, see the average lifespan of uh, a good mattresses is not more than about four to five years. Um, and uh, though we give a, a larger uh, warranty, for instance, and there are products with us which we give a warranty of closer to about 10 years, starts from five years. All of a sudden, then, a, a, a healthy mattresses uh, uh, remains for about four to five years. Uh, this we need to educate to the customers, you know. Um, uh, it's an investment. So you should invest in mattresses and, uh, and you know, um, change is my mattresses once a, once a while, at least about four to five years. If this trend is... Um, uh, got into the mindset of customers, um, I think um, uh, the business gets uh, uh, literally well, literally well. Well, Chaitanya, you know, the other challenge is the challenge of competition, because on the one hand, you have organized players, unorganized players, and that you have D2C players, some established players. How do you compete? I think the main way to compete against traditional players for us is that we, as a D2C company, are D2C in every facet of our life which means we listen to our consumers on a daily basis as opposed to a large company which engages a research agency once in a few years. The second big thing is technological innovation. Because we listen to consumers on a daily basis, 
we know what they like and what they don't like. And we are able to bring the best scientific research from across the country, across the world, into our products through our R&D labs. And the third biggest thing is that we are able to engage with our customers post-sales. Uh, we call them and explain the value of the products, how to extend the life of the products, how to take care of the hygiene of the products, all of those things as a value-added service post-sales, which again, traditional players, which work with three or four middlemen are not able to do. So it's not that uh, these companies are incompetent. They are very, very respected, uh, very, very innovative companies which have existed for many decades. It's just that the world has changed where customers expect a much faster feedback loop and much more responsiveness from the brand. Okay, time now for the bigger question, and that is, what is it going to take to wake up the sleep industry? Priyanka, you as a startup player, your thoughts first, and then Mohan Raj, of course, you should chip in. You know, absolutely, it's all, if you see, it's already being shaken up, right? A lot of new age brands are coming in. As I said, I think we need to focus a lot on products and the quality of products and the innovation we are bringing in, right? We see, you know, we are working on a lot of new um, uh, products in pipeline, like sleep monitoring, like sleep tech, right? How could you have? So I think innovation is one thing which is needed to disrupt the industry. And with, you know, sleep company we've learned in last three years that consumers want that consumers want better products, right? In this industry, quality of products, quality of comfort is becoming a bigger driver than really the price point. So I think that's really, really needed to shake up the industry. Second is, as you said, this industry is very, very unbranded, fragmented, right? The distribution channels are very inefficient today. You have distributors, you have retailers, very, very high margins, uh, right? And I think that needs to change. So as more brands start selling direct to consumers and you see inefficiencies getting reduced, I think that that's what's going to change the industry and you know make us more closer to developed countries. I would say, uh, you know, all of us have gone through the pandemic and I think realizing that sleep is very, very important. Uh, I know there was a time even when I was small, sleep was considered to be lazy. So my, uh, you know, take on this is everyone should understand the importance of a good sleep. And I think you won't get a good sleep if you don't sleep on a good surface in a good environment. So beyond uh, mattresses, we are also, you know, educating our consumer on various aspects, they should really, uh, you know, keep a watch on so that they can get a very good night's sleep. And that's very important. Uh, so I would, I would say that, you know, all of us realizing the importance of sleep and investing in a good product and maybe as an industry finding a solution to, uh, you know, the old mattresses, how do we discard it and ensure there is less minimal damage to the environment. I think these are a few things uh, which uh, as an industry we should be working for and as a consumer, I would say the consumer should be thinking about uh, and not, uh, you know, considering that to sleep for uh, six to eight hours in a day is, is to be is like to be lazy. I think it's about, uh, you know, staying fit and healthy. All right, Monraj, thanks a lot for that. In fact, on that note, we'll thank Priyanka and all the gentlemen for joining in and talking us through the sleep market and the importance and the economic size of that as well. With that, Ritu, it's curtains on this season of Mad About Markets. Yes, it is, but we will be back soon. So in the meantime, you catch up on some sleep. After a short nap. <laughs>